internet. It is the Millennial Zoomer, the original Millennial Zoomer, probably the only Millennial Zoomer on YouTube. I mean, there are probably many Millennials who are also Zoomers in that weird in-between uh, year era. But uh, last I'm here. Today, I wanted to show you guys something that I worked on a couple summers ago. I got bored. Sometimes when I get bored, I just want to keep my design skills uh, in check. And some of you might already recognize this, just looking at it. It is my attempt at a replication of the uh, typical uh, repulsing craft that was uh, inspired, partially built by uh, Victor Schauberger. I made a few slight improvements. And honestly, I think from an aerodynamic point of view, I am not confident that this would take off. So it could, it very well could, but I think it's missing something in terms of the impeller, this part here, just design-wise. Um, I didn't try and make any fluid dynamic simulations. Maybe I'll do that in a future. Maybe I won't. Um, the reason I decided to design this is because uh, when I was doing work in solid state inertial propulsion systems, which are just basically impulsive or implosive dynamic systems, um, this was a fluid base implosive system, right? So instead of having something being spit out of a machine, um, it basically sucks itself through the vacuum. Something like the, I think it's called the Garuda Sinjavi. It's a special, it's a branch in uh, India. If you pour water into it, it twirls up uh, because of its geometry and like sucks the air up. And that's the same kind of idea, the operating principle for this impeller. So instead of having a turbine, which, you know, will compress air, and then like spit it out really fast. That, that's one way you could have this as a, a turbine. And this really is a turbine at the end of the day. It's like a pancake shaped turbine. And the idea isn't to have a lot of air that's being pushed out. Um, it's to have the air like swim across or have the uh, turbine, if you will, swim across water. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm starting to get a little lost in my thoughts here, lost in the thoughts. So let's take a look at this and it will be probably be a short video. I say that and sometimes it takes a while. So let's go into this journey together. So uh, at the end of this video, I'll provide a link. Anyone can go and download these parts and build it yourself. In fact, I actually ended up building it. I 3D printed the parts. I made it extremely 3D printable friendly because I want people to be able to replicate these things to improve upon the designs and to do science. That's what I want. That's the whole point of this. <laughs> I'm all about doing science. And so, um, yeah, uh, I think there are cool improvements that can be made here. Again, my attempt was just to replicate uh, what I was able to find. Uh, and there's a lot of images and things floating around. This is based off of the classic repulsing. If you've ever seen a picture of it on the internet, this is based off of that classic picture. Um, the repulsings that have been around and circulated in the internet, there are quite a few of them. Um, and when I say quite a few, there are really two, there are purportedly two types in a book. Really, I think it's just one and people have mixed and matched the parts. I'm not gonna go into the whole history. That's not what this video is. I don't have time to explain it because there are a lot of different devices, different machines, different innovations that uh, Schauberger worked on uh, that influenced other people and other kinds of engineering. And so this was just my attempt to really study this machine and understand the principles, the working principles. Like I spent time counting all of the individual rills, the gills you guys see here, which are, I think it was 120, you'll see. Uh, maybe I'll have like a PowerPoint slide on it which shows you. Uh, I really took great lengths to look at that and then I also took great lengths to look at the impulsive, um, well not the impulsive, excuse me, the impeller. That's basically what this is here at the top. And it varies. Um, I think it's also missing some stuff from the things that we do have um, of the machine. This this component here is basically impeller. Anyway, let me stop rambling. Well, let's actually jump into this. Okay, so first off we have an axle. And the axle, uh, as you probably guessed, is supposed to connect to a motor. A motor which will spin the entire impeller assembly. So that way it can be like a suction and suck all the air and go through. Um, the cowl casing, so this is the first one, it goes right under. And so it's basically supposed to help with the coanda effect as the air is passing through. Um, it kind of creates a cushion on the under it, right? Like it curls up and it creates a, night of, a nice extra cushion. And there might even be an added benefit of something like a vortex, uh, like, <laughs> I don't want to sound weird here, but uh, I'm not, again, this is not to go into how this would create a vortex in air, but through the coanda effect, as the air is rushing in through here, this helps to shape the air, and it does provide a kind of cushion. 
Uh, there's a great YouTuber, and if I find his name, I'll put it in the description, where he's done tests and experiments with trying to make vortex light uh, cushions uh, from the shape and geometry. So this is the other part. Also probably the one of the tricky... I say tricky because I was really trying to get all these details here as to how it looks. For example, let's look at the analysis. So it's called Plate D, I believe, in the design that I used. Um, and it's actually a combination of a few things. So I fused this plate with another assembly. I didn't make them two separate parts. They can be, but there's really no point in doing that. Um, and I won't go into the reasons why, but I just want to show you something here. So if you pay attention to the gills, the rills here, if my fusion will let me zoom in, good. You can see that I have a little tapered curve here and it's not just a flat, like strict, like a flat, um, what do you call it? flat cut, it's a curved cut, and that's to allow the air to uh, flow nicer as it's getting curved here. If you look at the design, there is a video by Guy, it was like something about like the last water wizard, I can't remember who it was, but it was a German man, and he was able to get this part manufactured by someone else. The top was flat, but in the original designs that I saw being tested by Hal Puthoff and some of the other guys in the video, this had a nice um, sloping curve. Uh, a nice chamfer to it. I shouldn't say chamfer because I didn't really chamfer this, but there was a angled gradient curve to it. So um, that's exactly what I did in the design here. Uh, maybe I should bring a clarification first. The previous design I call plate D. Technically it's plate D and C combined. At least that's how they were uh, called. That's what they were called in the book I saw. So what I did to make it easier for 3D printing um, and I'll, is I, I combined plate C and D and the cowl base, which is the first thing we saw here together. So the gills, the rills that you saw, I think that would be called plate D in my design, I have to check. And this would be called plate C. I chose these naming conventions based on the uh, book I saw that I was using, well, multiple books, multiple books, multiple images. And I might post some of them at the end of this video. But uh, this is the plate DC combo, I call it, with the lower cowl. I have two versions of this, so I'll provide uh, this version has a little bit of a um, like a millimeter or two uh, height here. You see this like little slope here. In the other version, there is no slope. It's just sitting flat on the cowl. So I'm just speaking about this region right here. Yes, we're almost at the end. This right here is what I call the plate B plus cowl top. So this by itself is a cowl. And I just superimposed that. I combined that with plate D, which is what you see here with the, uh, the grooves <laughs> that will actually be sandwiched with a gap. I believe it was about a three to five millimeter gap airspace, and that can be changed. I'm sure that there's a critical spacing for it and there are ways it can be modified. Uh, in this design, we can see that air is supposed to be passing or being sucked in through here. Uh, I instinctively don't like, I don't, this design is interesting to me. That's what I'd say. Uh, the design is interesting. Again, I was just copying. I also took time trying to, I actually numbered, I counted all of the uh, holes that were here and the spacing that went into both of them and tried to get the angles as best as I could. Um, as you guys can see here, the thickness can vary. Uh, that should be something easy to uh, fix inside of the editing software. You can change the thickness of this material. If you're using metal, then it's very good. If you're using plastic, you might want the thickness to be a bit more. But I mean, this just makes it easier. You can print it as one piece. Oh yeah, and also this top right here is technically another part. It's an ancillary component like the axle. Um, you can have this removed. You can cut it out. Um, I just put it there because, you know, I. if you're gonna screw all of this together, it's probably easier to have like a central thing in the center here where you can just screw it. And then I also, you can see some little board holes. They didn't really quite go through. That's so if you use a screw, um, if you decide you want to drill all the way through, you can. If you don't want to drill all the way through, then you don't have to drill all the way through. Um, so yeah, hopefully that makes some sense. And moving on, the last component here, I call this the impeller ring because as you can tell from the design, it is essentially an impeller. That's what it does. And it sits on top of everything else. And when this thing is rotated, it sucks in air. Uh, this is something else I feel like if somebody who is a uh, specialist in uh, aerodynamic systems here, I'm sure I could figure it out running some fluid simulations here. There's probably an optimal impeller design to use. There are different impellers. 
Um, I changed this design just a bit uh, from the original, but it still has the same number of teeth that I saw, which were measured in the old black and white photo. Um, and it has the same slant, uh, degree slant. I, it took a lot of time, it took a lot of effort to count all of these uh, rills correctly and then to really try and get the uh, slant correct. Um, looking at the documentary um, with Hal Puthoff inside of it, the I can't even remember what that documentary is called. But again, I might post those videos at the end. So I actually have different versions of this. I have this one is only a single version where you see the um, little I don't know what to call these the little dipped real things. I have a version where there are two of them, so it sits on top. But I think it's kind of redundant. So this is kind of like a cap, um, and when the air comes in. It basically uh, deflects through a curved pattern here. Uh, if we were able to see through it, let me see if I can get a see-through design. Okay, folks. So I was able to get a see-through design, and you can see what I mean when I say the air like deflects. So as the air goes in, you can see that it is being deflected in a curve right here, and then it's going to travel all the way down. So let me put the analysis back if it'll let me do that. So this is the cross section. It will go. It will be curved and then it will come in down here and then it's supposed to be sucked up by the other component I just showed you guys so yeah okay if you're still with me then congratulations you made it this far I always say these are gonna be short and they end up being long because it takes about a minute or two to shoot everything but this is what everything looks like when it's combined right here so um, we have all of the parts uh, let's remove the analysis boom what do we see here it looks almost like a weird disk it looks kind of cool I, I like this design it looks really nice um, but now here lies my problem for basically being an effective impeller is this aperture right here. Uh, the only, <laughs> this is kind of funny, right? Um, when you have water being drained in a top, that creates kind of like a vortex here. And so there's something that needs to happen up here that allows that to take place with air effectively when it's twirling. It could be the case that there is a critical RPM where that happens, but uh, I mean, that, that would just be throwing your hands in the air and saying that that happens. I don't see any condition for that to take place. I can tell you what I do know um, can definitely take place if this is built is that this is supposed to function as an impeller. I'm sure there's a better impeller that can be used here. So the impeller ring, I'm removing it now. Um, so the impeller ring functions as an impeller. And then here at the top, when the air is sucked in, it goes through these rills here, and then it's also, uh, well, the, the rills act almost like fish gills, right? And they travel along, and then they basically, the coanda effect takes place here, and provides an extra cushion for pushing it. The air is supposed to kind of like curl up. And I'm just like blazing through all of this. I'm really not taking time to uh, go through it technically, because I just want to show you guys that this design is here, and if anyone wants to go and make improvements and do better, uh, they are more than welcome to do that because that's what science is about sharing and caring and doing better uh, We need more scientists who care. <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you like subscribe and uh, Stay tuned for whatever I might show next. I'll put this on my GrabCAD and my Thingiverse uh, You guys should go and download my designs. I don't know why no one is downloading them download them and try to use them uh, So that way we can do more research choice is grace folks and uh, this is the millennial zoomer out Thank <laughs> you.